Hello, this is your radiation heat transfer pre-lab. In this lab, you're basically going to characterize the behavior of a black body system. We have a, an oven which is emitting as a black body and we have a detector which is behaving hopefully as a black body. Your job in this uh, lab is basically to characterize it and determine its behavior. So as I mentioned, in this lab we have an oven. The oven is set to a temperature, prescribed temperature that's in your lab right up and it's emitting in all directions. Down on a rail that we have in the laboratory, we have a detector. The detector is intercepting a fraction of the radiation that's being emitted by the oven. Okay, with this apparatus, we're going to measure the voltage from the detector and we're going to convert that voltage into uh, a power, uh, uh, which will be our um, heat flux, our heat uh, going to the detector, and also we're going to use that same detector to measure the temperature. Now, a good way to characterize the behavior of this system is, first of all, to draw a circuit diagram, and I've drawn that here. And I've let the different points I've labeled one as the oven, two as the detector, and three as the surroundings. So over here, we have the oven that's emitting as a black body. It goes through some resistance, which is uh, indicated by this uh, term here, and then it leaves the all the energy leaving the uh, oven is represented by J1. Okay, that energy goes in one direction to the detector, it goes from J1 to J2, that's from the oven to the detector, and then the rest of it goes to the surroundings. So we have the resistance from 1 to 2, which is represented by this term, and then the re uh, resistance to the surroundings represented by this term. Then we have the surroundings, which is represented by this term, uh, subscript 3, and then we also have the detector, which is represented by subscript 2. Now, if we make the assumption that the, all the uh, bodies are behaving as black bodies, then the circuit diagram, the resistance over here goes to zero at these three points right here, and the circuit diagram becomes this term, uh, this diagram right here. Okay, so at the surface of the oven, it's behaving as a black body, so J1 then equals EB1, the radiosity equals the black body radiation, which can be represented as sigma T1 to the fourth, goes by the fourth power. And then we have similar representations at all the other nodes. Then we can write in the, um, the heat flow. From one to two, we can write it like this. We have Q. This would be Q1, or actually two, Q1 to 3. The uh, heat transfer from the oven to the detector would be Q1 to 2. And then we have the heat transfer from the uh, detector to the surroundings could be Q2 to 3. Now also note that Q1 to 2 and equilibrium is equal to Q2 to 1, and also Q1 to 3 would be equal to Q3 to 1, and Q2 to 3 is equal to Q3 to 2. Okay, so that would be our circuit diagram. Now we want to calculate the theoretical uh, power that's being transferred, and so in order to do that, we can set up this equation over here. If we're looking for the heat transfer from the oven to the detector, we would use this equation where we have Q1 to 2, and we know that from our circuit diagram, that would be equal to the radiosity of 1 minus radiosity of 2 divided by the resistance, which is given by this term. And since we are assuming that it's a black body, then J1 just becomes sigma T1 to the fourth, and J2 is sigma T2 to the fourth. So if we know the temperatures, and we know the area of 1, and we know the view factor of 1 to 2, then we should be able to calculate Q1 to 2. That's what we're going to do. We're going to use our detector to measure the temperature, and from that we'll get our theoretical power from 1 to 2. Then we can calculate, uh, we can also uh, use the thermal pile, our detector, to um, give us the power directly. So we're going to take that power that we get from the thermal pile, and we're going to compare it with Q1 
1 to 2. And we're going to do that at a um, variety of distances that are outlined in your write-up. Okay, we can also calculate the other heat rates. For example, if we want Q1 to 3 or Q2 to 3, I think it asked for that in the uh, write-up. So we can use these relationships here. We're going to, uh, if we take the view factors, which we can calculate, F1 to 2 plus F1 to 3 is equal to 1. Well, it's hard to calculate F1 to 3 directly because we don't know the area of the surroundings. 3 is, represents the surroundings. So without the area of the surroundings, we couldn't do it the normal way. Uh, but we do know we are able to calculate F1 2. So by using that, if we know what F1 2 is, we can just subtract it from 1, and that gives us F1 3. The same thing if we uh, want F2 to 3, or F3 to 2, it's easy for us to calculate F2 to 1. We can use this relationship to get F2 to 3. We may need some other uh, view factors. Sometimes they're hard to get, but we can use the reciprocity relationship here. We know that, I've written it in the general form here, we have AI FIJ equals AJ FJI. Okay, so as an example, A1 F12 equals A2 F21. Another example, A1 F1 to 3 equals A3 F to 1. And you could write more uh, relationships like this if you want to. Now, that pretty much explains the experiment. I want to go over your uh, report guidelines a little bit. One of the biggest sources of points being taken off on a lab report is just not following instructions. We give you a lot of instructions. We pretty much lay it out step by step what we want you to turn in. You need to follow those instructions very carefully. You also need to read the guidelines that we have on the website. For example, we have the, uh, there's a document called the letter format and frequently asked questions. You need to follow that format very carefully. You need to read all the frequently asked questions. Those questions come from um, mistakes that people have made in previous semesters. Every time we see a mistake that more than a couple of people make, we add it to the frequently asked questions. Also, there's a document called a properly formatted business letter. Read that, follow that format. And if there are any other areas that you're not sure about, ask your TA. But if it asks for something on the lab report and you're not sure what it means, don't just make something up and write it down because you will be guaranteed to lose points. So ask your TA. They're the, your best source because they're the ones grading. Okay, so thank you. And now we're going to move on to the laboratory demonstration. This is the radiation experiment. In order to operate this apparatus, if you're the first group of the day, I'd like you to record the temperature using this thermometer. This will be the ambient temperature. And then the next step will be to turn on the multimeter. If you're the first group of the day, note the value on the multimeter, and then write that value and the uh, the temperature on the board for subsequent groups during the day. All right, so once we have the multimeter on, uh, the next step will be to turn the oven controller or our black body cavity controller on. Uh, with this equipment, we have a uh, black body source, we have a thermal pile, and then we have our controller here, and we have our multimeter here. All right, we're going to set the controller to 500 degrees Celsius. In order to do this, there are little buttons here. You're going to scroll up or down to the set point, and then you scroll to the right, and that will bring up a place to choose the uh, temperature, and then you scroll up and down and set the temperature. It'll probably already be set. We'll set this to 500 degrees Celsius for this experiment. And then when you're done, just scroll back until you're at the main menu. Okay, 
At this point, we need to wait for the, uh, the oven to heat up to 500 degrees. So that'll probably take about 15 minutes. In the meantime, we'll set the thermal pile. In order to do this, first we want to have the aperture here set on 0.6 inches. So that's the diameter of the aperture. It's selectable. We're going to set it for 0.6. And then we're going to move the thermal pile right up until it almost touches the cavity. You can actually touch it. And then I want you to record the distance. There's a scale down here on the rail. Record that distance. And then we're going to set it 10 centimeters away from the aperture. So we'll just add 10 to whatever the reading is there. And then we slide it over like this. And then we'll lock it down. You may have to uh, line up the thermal pile with the aperture on the oven here. And you can do that by adjusting the screw right here and this will raise up and down and then we have screws here you can move but they should, will probably be in place when you come in. Alright, so then we have to wait for both the oven to reach its steady state temperature, 500 degrees C, and we wait for the thermopile to reach its steady state temperature. And you can tell it's steady state when the voltage stops changing. Now that's going to take about 15 minutes so we don't need to wait for that now. Once it reaches its steady state, record the, uh, the voltage and the distance. Then we're going to note the distance and we're going to move it another five centimeters away from the cavity. Come over here, lock it down, and then wait until it reaches steady state. Once it reaches steady state, repeat the procedure, write down the distance and the um, voltage. And then we'll just keep doing that every five centimeters all the way out to a distance of 50 centimeters. This will probably take you the whole period waiting for the thermopile to reach a steady state. So you want to get started on the experiment early. You might want to come in a little early and uh, get going like that. All right, when you're done, uh, Unless somebody is waiting, if somebody's waiting, you can just leave it. If you're, if nobody's waiting, turn the multimeter off and turn the power off on the controller, and that's all you have to do. Thank you. Some of you will be using this apparatus to perform the radiation laboratory. In order to use this apparatus uh, to get started. First we're going to turn on the cooling water using this valve right here. Turn that on, just listen and make sure there's some water running. The next thing we're going to do is turn on the multimeter, ensure that it's in volts. When you turn it on, when it comes on, you want to record the reading before we turn anything else on in order to get any kind of background noise that might uh, be occurring from the thermal pile. In this apparatus, we have an oven over here. We have a little uh, plate here through which cooling water goes. We have a thermal pile over here uh, which collects the radiation from the oven, which is connected to the multimeter. And then over here we have the oven controller. Okay, after you've recorded the background voltage, then record the ambient temperature. There's a thermometer here, and you want to write this temperature down. We're going to use this to uh, correct any uh, deviations from what the controller is saying. All right, once that's done, oh, and then also I would like you to uh, write down any background noise here from the multimeter as well as the temperature. If you're the first group of the day, write this on the board. If you're not the first group of the day, uh, you won't be able to do this. You'll just have to use the information from the first group of the day. All right, the next thing is to turn on the controller. We turn on this switch right here. We turn on this switch. First we set this to zero, and then we turn the switch on. And we're, when it first comes on, we're going to read the temperature. If the temperature is different from what you measured with the thermometer, then linearly co correct your data. We assume that this is an accurate reading of the ambient temperature. All right, once that's done, then you come down here and we're going to set the controller to 900 degrees, and that's 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So we just push the little button until it goes up to 900. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to heat the oven up to a temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we just, uh, we have to wait until the temperature gets up to 900 degrees. In the meantime, we can set our thermopile here to start making measurements. So what we want to do is we want to measure the radiation in uh, starting at a distance of about 10 centimeters away from the oven and then we'll increase it in 5 centimeter increments up to about 50 centimeters depending on how much time you have in the lab. So in order to do this, I'm going to loosen this a little bit. First I want to make sure that this plate is centered over the front of the oven. It can be moved like this. You just want to set it so that the hole lines up with the oven cavity. And then we're going to move the thermal pile until it almost touches the opening, the aperture. We want to get it lined up, so we may have to move this around a little bit, and we may have to turn it a little bit. Okay, so we get it so that it's lined up, and it's almost, well, we'll take it to right where it's touching, and then we read the number down here on the scale. You can either read it on the front or the back, and then we're going to add 10 centimeters to that, and we're going to move it in this direction, 10 centimeters, and then we'll lock it down, and then that's where we're going to get our first reading. But we have to wait till this gets up to 900 degrees, and it probably will take about 15 minutes if you're the first group of the day. Like right now, it's only up to 113 degrees. Okay, once it reaches a steady state at 900, then you're going to collect your first set of data. You're going to write the voltage down. And your lab write-up, it tells you how to convert that voltage to both power and to temperature. That would be the temperature of the thermal pile. Once that's done, we're going to move it. Just note the position. We're going to move it another five centimeters. Let it come to steady state. And it'll probably take uh, five minutes easily to come to steady state. And then we're going to record the voltage again. And then we'll just keep doing that in increments of five centimeters until we get out to uh, 50 centimeters. When you're done, that will complete the experiment. At that point, you can turn the controller off, or if there's another group waiting, just leave it on. You can turn it off there. There are two switches. We'll turn the multimeter off, and we'll turn the water off. Okay, you don't have to wait for it to cool off before you turn the water off, because all the water is doing is just providing a cool background so that the only hot point on the aperture here is right through the aperture, so it's not actually cooling the oven. And then that completes uh, this portion of the experiment.